What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, uh, welcome to a new video. First and foremost, thank you for a great response to my last video, my video about how I put on so much weight. Um, I'm glad that that video went down so well, uh, it's one of my best performing videos so far, so really happy with that, and uh, if you haven't seen that, then go and check it out on my channel. Uh, it's definitely a good video to watch, and to get an understanding of who I am. Um, so yeah, today's video I'm going to be talking, almost following on from the last video really, talking about why I chose Iron Man uh, as a as a journey I wanted to pursue, and and really like how I first heard about Iron Man and what made me go for it really. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Uh, leave a like on the video, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my content. Let's get started now, on the video. Iron Man's slogan is literally their tagline is anything is possible, and that to me is the sort of the sort of uh, dream that I wanted to go after sort of slogan that appealed to me um, obviously sat there at 26 stone uh, you know 10 months ago I needed something big to drive me um, to get me driven and to get me determined to chase something get me back on track so Iron Man was that uh, <clears throat> was that thing and yeah I mean I'd heard about Iron Man before but I, I, it was always in the back of my mind but I had decided that you know I needed something massive Iron Man was massive but I also had heard these amazing success stories of uh, certain people and I just actually just finished reading uh, Mike Riley's book Finding My Voice now for anyone who doesn't know Mike Riley is the Iron Man announcer he does the um, like the race announcements and, and calls everyone over the line uh, at um, a lot of Iron Man events not all of them but a lot of them and he's sort of one of the most famous ones one of the original guys who started doing it for Iron Man um, so I just finished reading this book and it, there was a few stories in there what I mean all of the stories were inspiring uh, about people who sort of changed their life to get into Iron Man and but the one which uh, was so personal to me was about a guy who he mentioned called Marcus Cook who was over 400 pounds maybe even close to 500 pounds um, uh, and his friend um, got a, uh, a diagnosis that he had cancer and his friend said to him um, I'm dying because of cancer and you're dying because of your because of the choices you make and uh, from that moment on he decided to change his life and he started training for an Ironman obviously very slowly because of his because of the weight you can't just initially just jump on a bike at four or five hundred pounds um, sort of similar to where I was ten months ago although I wasn't quite that big um, and he started to change his life and he ran uh, you know built himself up and up and after a few years he ran a couple of Ironman uh, events and then got himself to Kona and uh, which is the Ironman World Championships um, which he had to qualify for he got himself there uh, through the legacy program and uh, finished uh, Ironman World Championships and on the finish line brought out a, a cardboard cut out, cut out of himself um, when he was at his biggest um, and that you know that hit me because it's quite similar to my journey really although you know I didn't have somebody say those exact words to me it's kind of how I felt um, so that yeah that I'd, I had already heard about that before I read the book I'd already heard about Marcus Cook but um, yeah just really um, confirmed that I was on the right road really and I was doing something that I really wanted to do so um, yeah I guess I, I first heard about Iron Man probably when I was in the middle of my teenage years just after school and I, the first I ever heard about Iron Man was through Dick and Rick Hoyt um, who are really famous you might have seen them uh, online somewhere they uh, their son um, Rick has uh, cerebral palsy um, I think as well as some other issues and um, basically he's disabled uh, and wasn't able to do uh, wasn't it wasn't able to do anything really with his limbs so he was um, yeah he, I mean he was stuck to a wheelchair and uh, he once he one day he got his uh, got his voice through a computer and um, I think their first the first step for them was that um, Rick, the son, asked uh, his dad if they could do a, a charity 5k for one of their friends who was ill in some way and from that they did a 5k and I think he said something along the lines of um, when we're racing I've never felt so alive or something like that and uh, obviously that inspired Dick, the dad, um, to keep racing and uh, yeah I heard about this quite a few years ago 
and saw the videos which are massively inspiring, some of the most inspiring videos on, on the internet, for anyone who doesn't know, they um, basically that what they do is he would, during the swim portion, uh, he would pull a boat behind him with his son in um, and then they would get out and get onto a custom made bike, um, effectively you know a bike with a, with a carrier on the back um, for his son to go in and then he would push him in sort of a um, a, a roller um, sort of thing uh, during the run and yeah that was massively inspiring to me I remember seeing that and thinking wow this is amazing and then learnt more about Iron Man and what it was and I know that it was it's always been deemed as like uh, the toughest one day endurance event uh, and that hits me I, you know that's the sort of thing I like um, you know because obviously there's massive challenges you can do over multi days which are very different but to do it all in one day it, you know it, it's, uh, it's a whole different thing. Um, so yeah, that was when I first heard about it, and I kind of always decided that, obviously at this point I was I was doing a lot of running, and I decided that um, I was going to carry on with running, and I was going to build into ultra marathons after I'd done all my marathons and things, and then from there, I would then, once I got everything out of ultra marathons I could, that I would go and start doing Ironman, but I kind of always put it off because I knew I couldn't, couldn't swim very well, and I couldn't ride a bike. Um, so yeah, that was that was my, that was the first thing I'd heard about it, and I decided that was how I was going to do it. Uh, but it was always on the radar. But then, you know, uh, when I started ten months ago and decided I needed something big, running again, it's something that I felt like I'd already got everything that I could have out of it. So, um, so I, it wasn't a big enough goal, wasn't a big enough dream for me to to really get me mo not I don't like the word motivated to really get me driven. Um, so I before we're done with this I, video, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a training update on myself. Um, for anyone who hasn't followed me on Facebook, I've actually been, and you might be able to hear it in my voice actually, I've actually been a little bit ill this week. Um, so this was meant to be the last week of my sort of winter block, uh, the last big week. Um, Monday went fine and then after my bike ride, uh, after my walk bike session on Monday night, I just got some real severe throbbing in the upper, upper parts of my legs. Um, so we just so uh, I felt rough as hell. Woke up the next day and was bunged up with cold, um, and that carried on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So I did I had three days off, and then yesterday um, still didn't feel 100%. But went for a run, and we just decided that we would take this weekend easy, um, and then so treat this as a recovery week, and then start a new block next week. So that's the end of my winter block, effectively. Um, I know it's still technically winter, but you know, winter for me was like December, January, and a bit of February. So that's pretty much done. Uh, it's now like 11 or 12 weeks into my first race of the season, so that's the next block. Really, it's like the real build-up to the first triathlon of the season. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm chuffed to bits with how the the winter went, uh, particularly the last sort of month. Um, incredible consistency. Uh, hit PBs in in the pool on the bike and on the run as well. Running has come along a bit and got to the stage now where I've just started doing intervals on the run uh, as well as the what bike sessions on the bike. Um, so yeah, that was you know, great, um, great block and uh, very promising to look forward to the next 12 weeks really. I am so close to hitting my five stone loss. I'm about a pound or two off, so that's gonna come soon. Um, and then I will have a stone and two pounds to lose to be below 20 stone, uh, which is a massive milestone. That's like below 20 stone is like a normalish weight again. Um, you think if you're above 20 stone, I, I have always felt from above 20 stone that I'm uh, uh, not a normal weight at all. So, um, yeah, I can't wait to get that. And hopefully, I can get that before my first race of the season. That might be a little bit too much to ask, but that's what I'm going to try and do, and that would be awesome. Right, guys, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. As I said earlier, hit the like, hit the subscribe. And yeah, I shall see you in the next one.